Michelle and Dan Smith at De the Deliverance House, which is one of Comquest Services residential facilities. And we are going to interview Michelle and Dan, um, not only about what they do at Deliverance House and Wilson Hall, but they're also going to share their recovery stories. So please share with us your names and how and why you started the recovery process at Comquest Services, um, Deliverance House and Wilson Hall. I am Michelle Smith. Um, I'm a program assistant on staff at Deliverance House. Um, I was pretty bad on drugs and alcohol um, all growing up. Um, I had a father who was an alcoholic, um, and it just ran rampant in my family. Um, I had gotten some charges um, in Wayne County, and the judge wanted me to, to do something about that, so I ended up going to the main office um, at Quest, and I enrolled in an IOP class. Um, and that was the first time that I found out about Deliverance House because back then rehab wasn't really as widely spread as it is now. So um, there was a girl actually in my IOP class that was going into the Women's Deliverance House. Um, I didn't act on that right away, but um, as it resonated with me and I kept coming back, I was... I was still actively using um, and going to my IOP class. Um, and finally, I did ask my counselor there if she would refer me here to Deliverance House, um, and that's what she did. Um, it took me a couple months before I ended up walking through the doors at Deliverance House, um, but eventually I did, um, and it was the best thing, the best decision I've ever made in my life. So. That's a little bit about how I got here. Okay. My name is Daniel Smith, and um, my whole life was falling apart around me, and I didn't really know what to do, know where to go. Um, I was also in an IOP class at Quest, and um, I was telling my counselor about it, telling her for those few hours I was in IOP I was safe, but as soon as I'd leave there, I went back to doing the same old thing, and. Um, you know, she said, we do have a more intensive, it's an inpatient program. You go and live there for 90 days. And, um, you know, I wasn't too sure about the whole 90-day thing. I thought I'd maybe a little, something a little more like 20 days, 15 days would have been up my alley. But um, she looked at me and she said, how bad do you want to stay sober? In that moment, um, you know, I, more than anything else, I just wanted to get my life back. I wanted to um, start making some positive changes. So, uh I finally agreed and I walked through them doors and um, met some great people that worked there. Uh, There's a great group of guys in there when I was in there and um, my life slowly started to change. I started to pick the pieces up, um, put my life back together and um, you know looking back on it, it was the best decision I ever made in my life. Um, I wouldn't be the father, husband, person, um, you know. It just wouldn't be the same as I am today if it wasn't for that place. It, um, it gave me a start, um, gave me hope, an opportunity, and um, since then my whole life has changed. And I'll be forever grateful for um, Quest, ComQuest, Wilson Hall. And who um, or what impacted you most during your stay at Deliverance Hall and or at Deliverance House and Wilson Hall? Oh gosh. Um, when I came to Deliverance House, I didn't, I had no idea about feelings or emotions or anything like that. Um, that was the reason that I drank and used drugs, um, was not to feel. And when I came in and I started to see the women around me, um, the things that they were doing, what the counselors were teaching the women, um, I really started to look at myself for the first time and I started to understand why I did the things that I did. Um, a lot of the counselors and staff that was was here at Deliverance House is no longer here anymore because it was five years ago that I went through the house. Um, but this house impacts my life every day. 
every day I get to walk through the doors um, and be here with the women is just, it's, it's awesome. When you walk in this house, like you said, when you came in earlier, you're like, it's so homey and there's so many miracles that take place here that I get to watch every day. So I just, I'm so grateful to still be a part of Deliverance House. And for me, it would, um, kind of similar answer to hers, but, um, it was just a combination of the people that were in place there when I went through there, from the counselors to the, um, PA staff to, uh, the house manager to even the cooks. I mean, anybody that was working there at that moment, um, played an important part of my recovery, and, um, it's just... Uh, there was my primary counselor, um, Mr. Hewitt, he no longer works there anymore, but, um, you know, I'm hoping one day I'll run into him again. Um, he had such a positive impact on my life, and um, it was just the staff in general. Some of them still work there, um, you know, Miss Williams, Mr. Montgomery, um, Mr. Scott was at the tail end of my stay, and... Um, it's just been awesome being able to go back there and work and see them people still there and still having um, compassion. And I guess that would be my favorite part of the program is how much the compassion of the staff had for the clients. Um, it wasn't about them, it was about the clients. And it's still that way today when I work there. And, um, you know, every time I'm pulling up in my car, pulling up to that, uh, through that long parking lot up to park, you know, I'm reminded of, you know, just how far my life has come by being able to walk through them doors. And now I get to walk through them in a different capacity. And, um, you know, just one thing I might say might help somebody that day. And, uh, you know, that's enough for me. What was it like um, for both of you to be seeking treatment um, and then both be working a recovery program once you finished um, your stay? And how did you end up coming back together? Um, and what does your life look like now compared to um, before you both went through treatment and started working your recovery program? Um, when we both, we both were together that day. I remember that day distinctly um, to this day. Um, he left before me and went to Wilson Hall and I waited for my mom to come get me and bring me here to Deliverance House. Um, but some, we had a no contact order because of just, you know, violence between each other and our use, you know, the same, every couple goes through, I mean, I don't know one person who suffers from alcohol or drug addiction that has a significant other that doesn't go through a lot of violence and abuse. Um, so we had a no contact order. So when I went into Deliverance House and he went into Wilson Hall, we were not allowed to have any contact whatsoever. Um, my counselor and his counselor coincided together. Um, I went to different meetings than he did. So we never even seen each other like while we were in house. I remember some of the girls would come back from a meeting and be like, oh, I seen, because he wasn't my husband at the time, I seen your kid's dad at a meeting. Um, but that was as far as it, as it went because I felt he was a part of my addiction that I had to leave him there. Um, and once I came into this house, um, everything, it immediately changed for me. Um, I started to hang out with the older women here that had some sobriety under their belt. Um, and I really, I really went hard in the 12 steps and Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, going out to meetings, um, I went to two, sometimes three meetings on the weekend, staying here. Um, and I really, really fought hard for my recovery. Um, I did everything they told me to. I got a sponsor. Um, we have to do emotions papers when we come, come to Deliverance House. Um, and it's kind of you and your counselor. Then we'll go back through and pinpoint, you know, what drove your behavior and your core issues and things like that. And I started to put all the pieces back together. Um, but everything, every day, things got better and started to change. Um, and I got out of, when I finally successfully completed the program here, um, 
I got a job and my kids, while I was in treatment, my kids went and stayed in Kentucky with my brother and my sister-in-law. Um, I don't have a lot of family around here. Um, so they didn't come back to me right away just because, hey, I completed treatment, I'm sober, mm -hmm. give me my kids back. Like, they were still in school, like, they had to finish the school year out. And to me, to get grounded being outside of the house, um, I can definitely say that God properly placed the stones um, in order for me because how everything, if I look over my life from my use to now, I can see where everything, everything was properly set into place for me to succeed in my recovery. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just, it worked out great. I worked, um, I still did very involved in mm -hmm. AA, going to meetings, sober support. That's what they taught me here was to build a sober foundation and get active in AA. And that's what I did. And I was a year and a half sober. And I was thinking about it for a long time to contact him. And I finally did. Mm -hmm. And like the process started rolling really fast after that. I don't, you start, you talk more, because I'm, you okay. talk. <laughs> yeah, like she said, we, we did both go into treatment on the same day, and it wasn't planned like that. We both had inquired about it, and it just happened to work out, uh, the bed opened up on the same day, and um, we weren't really 100% together at this time. It was, uh, it was a wreck, just mm -hmm. like, um, you know, that's just what, where our addiction took us in our relationship, and um so the bed opened up on the same day we both went like she said there was some uh, legal issues in place so um you know we weren't around each other so i got um you know i just kind of started to move on with my life so did she and um i wasn't able to see my children at this time because of the legal stuff i had going on and um you know i didn't really know what me and hers uh, future held um so after i was you know been sober about a year, a little longer is when she contacted me. I always had it in the back of my head that um, I always knew that she was the one for me, that we were meant to be, and um, I always kind of hung on to that hope. Even though sometimes in my words I would say, no, nah, we're done. I, in the back of my mind, I always hung on to it. And when she called me, it was like I looked at my phone and it was like, you know, it was just like life started to go full circle. And, um, before you knew it, we got back together, and um, we went to pick our kids up from Kentucky, and um, everything we had worked so hard for finally materialized. Mm -hmm. You know, it always says it'll always materialize if you work for it, and um, you know it really does. And um, it's just good because there's been a lot of people since um, we've been sober and working in the field that have uh, come up to us and say we give them hope. You know, a lot of couples, a lot of relationships, and um, you know that would be the one thing I would say. Um, that year apart gave us time to work on each other. Um, I believe in relationships, we spend a lot of time, um, I'm just talking for me, a lot of time trying to make the other person be exactly like us. Um, we want them to spend money like us, make decisions like us, raise children like us. And, um, you know, going through recovery and treatment, somebody told me, um, you know, you got to give your wife and your significant other the opportunity to be themselves. And, um, you know, we're all uniquely and, um, we all have different talents and we're all created differently and um, once I finally let go of that and started embracing her for who she is for who the person God intended her to be instead of trying to manipulate her to my beliefs and my ideas you know things started to go a lot smoother and um, a couple years after we were sober we got married and um, it's sometimes it's tough having your recovery programs together it just depends on I think it would have been rough if we would have been together that first year. I don't know for sure because we weren't, but um, you know, sometimes it's a little challenging, but it doesn't always have to be that way. Like I find hope and strength from watching her. Like she'll pick up one of her recovery books and start reading it, and the next thing you know I'm over there reading something. And um, it can work together, but it, it takes time, it takes effort, and um, you know, there's, I didn't give up on my recovery so I'm not going to give up on my marriage and um, you know that's just the way it is.
I want to add one thing. Um, it's very important for a couple in recovery to be able, and to have kids, to be able to find balance. Because sometimes that can, being a mother, a wife, um, and me being in recovery as well as him, you know, I have to respect that he needs time to work his recovery as he needs the respect that I have to have my time with my recovery and then, you know, with the kids also. So it is, I'm very grateful that we had that year apart because we were able to work on ourselves and be able to build that solid foundation for what God intended for our future to be. Mm -hmm. So that's super important. I see girls that leave here all the time that they leave and they jump back into relationships with these men and they don't have that foundation built and before you know it they're back out there using together you see that a lot so i'm just grateful that i know god uses me and danny you know for people in aa so it's really cool and i know you both touched on this but um michelle and dan why did you choose to uh, then work for Deliverance House and Wilson Hall. I, when I got sober, I had that burning passion on the inside of me that this is what I'm supposed to do. Like I am, once I get my year, I'm coming back here, I'm putting an application in to work at Deliverance House, and that's exactly what I did. And I've been here, I've been here ever since. I love my job. These women, I mean, they help me so much more than I could ever help them. They don't understand that, but as they go along in recovery, they'll, they'll know what I mean. I just, I love, I love this house. I love everybody here. It's just, it's an amazing, amazing place to work. I was, I opened up the newspaper probably about two and a half, three years ago, and Quest had an ad in there. She was already, she already worked for Quest, so, you know, that was her thing. I was, uh, I had a job, which I still have to this day. So I, I didn't really need work at the time, but, you know, I seen it, and it said hiring for program assistance at uh, all the different facilities. It's when they, you know, started expanding. And um, something was pulling at me, and it just kept telling me, and I, before long, I just went out and put an application in, and, um, I knew I could make a difference out there because the program assistants, some of them still work there today, Mr. Jennings, um, just Miss Williams, different ones, um, they helped me when I was in there. And um, you don't always have a lot of time to talk one-on-one -on -one with your counselors, but you know some of the program assistants are there at night and you can sit down and talk with them and um, the majority of them have been where you've been. And if they haven't, they still have compassion or addiction maybe has touched some aspect of their lives with their family or something else and um, you know there's a reason they work there and um, so I believe there's a reason I work there and um, all the staff when I like I said some of them still work there and I could tell when I first went to meet Mr. Montgomery he was excited that I was putting an application in and um, a lot of the other staff I knew was excited I was there too and um, you know I'm excited to be there because they made me feel welcome and um, I just can't there's been times where I was like oh life's getting a little too busy um, I'm just gonna stick with the one job and every time I tell myself that something happens um, and I just keep going back there um, I give these guys a coin when I was there we used to get coins when we graduated I'm just kinda like what you could carry around with you saying you completed treatment so when I came back and started working there, I carried the tradition on because they don't do it anymore. And um, when guys graduate, I'll give them a coin. And um, it's just the impact that that alone has had with people telling me, um, you know, I still carry that coin with me. Or I'll lead a meeting and somebody will get up and comment about the coin I gave them. Um, I know I'm there for the right reason, so I just keep, uh, I keep going back. So. If you were to... Um Tell a couple that is thinking about going into treatment, um, what is the message of hope that you would deliver to them um, as they take that first step to recovery? I would say please take that first step. Um, it'll be the best first step you have ever taken. I know it's scary. 
Um, I, see, I see that every single day girls come in and they are just beat up. Um, but they're so scared, so scared because it's that fear of the unknown. You don't know. Um, but just take that first step. There's too many people dying. Um, but this house, I, this house, I swear, it's miracles happen when you step foot in this house. Um, God is all through this house. Um, but I would just say do it. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do, but it'll be the most worthwhile thing you've ever done. The staff here is so... Um, so compassionate and understanding. We have a lot of staff here that's in recovery themselves. Um, and I know sometimes that can be tricky with um, finding boundaries and stuff. But then again, I see how great that the women do impact the clients. Um, and it's just, it's amazing. I would, oh my gosh. I would just say, I, that's the only thing I can say, is take the first step because it's going to be the most worthwhile step. It's scary, but just do it. And that's, that's, a, a that's the first time I ever, um, anytime I meet somebody, somebody new, um, inquiring about treatment or um, just not sure, not sure what to do, um, I always tell them they're worth it. Because a lot of times people, uh, when you get in that lifestyle and everything's falling apart around you and you're having consequences and it seems like one thing after the other, it's hard for you to see hope and, um, you know, hope happens here. Yeah. And that's what I tell them, uh, you're worth it, you deserve the opportunity to change, you have gifts and abilities that you'll never tap into if you don't put the drugs and alcohol down. And um, as far as couples go, um, I would let them know that, you know, they can do it together. It's not impossible. Um, you know, a lot of times there's a stigma going around that um, relationships just don't work in recovery. And um, I would just let them know that there's hope and um, they can do it together, even though it's a little more challenging. Um, if you can work on yourself and get yourself right, you have to get you right before you can work on your relationship. And um, as long as they're able to do that, um, just to go for it. And the unique thing about Deliverance House is that the women can come here um, with their children up to the age of five, correct? Yes. So they don't have to just abandon their children and come here on their own um, if that's the situation that they're in. Right. Yes, we have a lot of women. Um, they have visits with their children. Their kids may be with CPS or whatever, but um, they come here throughout the week and have visits with their children, and a lot of the women also get their kids on the weekends and they get to come stay we have a, a playroom our house is very kid friendly and families can also come and visit um, at Wilson and deliverance correct there's certain times that they can come during the yeah. week yeah the there's uh, yeah every you get visitation every week so um, the families and the loved ones are welcome to come out and see how their clients doing and um, be educated on addiction be educated on what to expect when the their loved one comes home and it's just uh, it's a magical time especially when you um, for me when I see some of the guys in there and their um, little kids come running down that ramp and jump in their arms and um, it gives the I'm glad they do it it gives the clients in there hope because um, a lot of times they'll go in there thinking um, you know maybe they wrecked a little bit of relationships or there's some turmoil there and um, a lot of times the people that love them still show up no matter what they've done to them, what they've put them through, they still come out and support them. And um, they need that hope to cling on to. And um, it keeps them going. So, so as parents of two children, mm -hmm. um, how do you plan on taking what you've learned um, and working your recovery to then educate um, your children on prevention um, of substance abuse? Oh, wow. Our kids are very into our recovery. Um, both of them go to AA meetings with us all the time. They've been there when we've given our leads. Um, my son, our son, which is 12, he has lived through our addiction. Um, and when we first got him back from 
my brother and sister-in-law, he was very skeptical on when's the next shoe going to drop, when's mom going to get arrested, or just when are they going to get in the fight. Um, in which it took a while of him living and understanding that that's not who we are today. Um, and going to meetings with us, he's finally comfortable in his own home. Um, he feels safe and he has that security that he didn't have as a young child. Um, and by the grace of God, my daughter was too young. She hasn't even seen me or her dad drink. So, um, they, like I said, my son knows all about what happened. He knows what we do today. They come to work with me on the weekends. They used to. Um, so they know what this house is about. Um, and they know that, they know what we need to do for us to stay sober and I just hope by us doing what we do in recovery in this field that they will take that with them as they grow up um, mm -hmm. and not go down that road mm -hmm. so that's only what I can hope and pray for yeah and I guess I would say you know you never know what decisions your child's gonna make mm -hmm. um, you know we're given free will and once you get at that age everybody has that choice to make and um they can go and experience in the wrong way or they can do the right thing and um, that's a choice they got to make for themselves but um, you know my hope is that from watching me and their mom gone go through what we've gone through and I'm um, still active in the program that if they ever do stumble upon that they'll know where to go mm -hmm. um, they'll be able to see it it's in their face every day mm -hmm. and um, we don't hide our recovery from them we bring them with us um, and that's education in itself, yeah. just from them watching us. Sometimes it's not words we say, it's them watching us do what we do. And, um, you know, I once heard a guy say, what I do today not only affects my kids, but it affects my kids, kids, kids. And I always took that with me. Um, you know, every decision I make will have an output, you know, an, an influence on what they do. And um, I made some bad decisions early on, and I can't go th back and fix those. But my decisions from here on out, um, they can see that I love them. And they can see that, um, you know, I'm sorry for what I've done. And, um, you know, they embrace it. Um, all your family and your kids want you to do is not drink anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, just be a good, honest person. And um, Spend time with yeah. them to yeah. be there, really. They just want that time. And yeah. in addiction, we didn't, you know, it's always go play, go do this. And they just want your love and time. Exactly. <laughs> well, as you've seen and heard, hope happens here. Hope happens at ComQuest Services. And we are so grateful and lucky to have people like Dan and Michelle share their story of recovery with you. So thank you guys so much and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.